Yep, I bought another car. I know you guys are surprised. It's also a project. You guys are still surprised, right? When you add one project car to the amount of project cars I currently have, percentage-wise, it's not a real big number, so it's fine. Now, this 94 Miata was totaled, and it went to the auction, which is where I get most of my bad ideas, and it needs some work. Now, it's nothing crazy. It's not wrecked. It does have a salvage title, unfortunately, because it was in a flood. Now, this car didn't get totally submerged. The water was about here, and it's not a hurricane car either. We don't get hurricanes in the Midwest. No, we don't get hurricanes in the Midwest. And on a Miata, there's not really a lot that's at the water level or lower that could be a ton of work to replace. Yeah, there's some harnesses we'll have to pay attention to, but a fresh water flood is not that critical on a car like this at that water level. It's a lot of clauses there. Now, this isn't just any 94 Miata. In fact, when I bought it at the auction, I knew more about this car than probably anyone else bidding on it, which is why I feel like I got a really good deal on it. This car is turbocharged. It also has a standalone. It has Lots of suspension modifications, lots of quality parts on it, and it's kind of a shame it ended up in this situation. I actually knew the previous owner, which is why I knew all the details on it, so I kind of had the leg up on all the other prospective bidders. Thankfully, everyone else backed down and got this just shy of three grand, which I think is a great deal, and it doesn't really need that much. That's what I say about all my projects. I really try not to get preachy on this channel. Aside from telling you folks to change your oil and check your oil level, I don't want to tell you guys to do anything. That's up to you. You guys make your own decisions. But there are some situations, especially the situation in which this car ended up at the auction in the first place, that really, really struck a nerve. So Jason, the previous owner of this car, made a claim with his insurance company and tried to buy the car back when it was done. And that's a normal procedure. Your car gets totaled, flooded, damaged, whatever it is you usually have a buyback option, which means they give you a check for the loss minus what they feel the car would bring at the salvage auction. There's usually a salvage value assigned to it. I've bought cars back. My parents have bought cars back. My friends have bought cars back. Sometimes the damage really isn't that bad and you can continue driving as is. And sometimes you want to buy another car just like it and transfer your parts over. Or maybe you want to fix it and you want to go through all the effort. That really should be up to us. And in this situation, it was the insurance company that denied that option for Jason. It was really frustrating for him, and I really feel bad. He took a huge loss on this car. Of course, probably wasn't insured for enough. But at the same time, he didn't have the chance to buy it back. So I made a deal with him. If it goes for under a certain value, I'll buy it and sell it to him for what I paid for it, minus a little bit for my trouble, you know. And it unfortunately went for more than he really wanted to spend on it, and I totally understand. On the other side of the coin... I was going to buy it no matter what. If he didn't buy it, I was going to buy it because I knew everything that was done to this car. And I also got on the phone with my insurer, which is what I recommend you guys do, and see if there's any loss type in which you could not have the option to buy your car back. My insurer said, nope, as long as it's not stolen, in which case we don't have it, you can buy your car back every single time. And there are some policies out there where you get to keep your car and they just write you a check no matter what. That's how my yellow Lotus is. This situation, unfortunately, I'm not going to name the insurance company. I'm not looking for any kind of slander lawsuit. Not what I'm about. But this insurance company denied that option for him, and it really sucks. It really sucks. Now, here's the good stuff. This car has an awesome, high-quality turbo kit, not some eBay kit. It has a lot of high-end parts on it. I don't really know why it's half taken apart. Uh, I don't know if he was working on it when it got flooded in the first place. But it did run and drive, according to Jason, so that's good. And it doesn't really look like it's going to take that long to plug things back in and figure out why it was taken apart. It probably runs fine. Um, no water in the oil. I already checked the oil. Everything looks good there. It looks like the water got to just the top of the AC compressor clutch. So that's not really that high on this. Uh, the only place that water would have had a chance to get into is the dipstick hole at that point, uh, which it didn't because there would be water in the engine and maybe the crank pulley. Again, it didn't do that. So I'm pretty confident the engine's okay. Now this is not a stock engine. This is a built engine. It has rods and pistons in it with 2,000 miles on it. That's just amazing. It's got, looks like RX-8 injectors in it. Again, this has a standalone on it as well. I think he said this car made 189 wheel horsepower on 10 PSI with stock exhaust. This is pretty good for a Miata. Warning. I know this may be hazardous to my health. 
I've breathed in worse, I promise, and it's not going to last long. This car has uh, some penicillin growing in it, I mean mold growing in it. Uh, it stinks to high hell. It does have a nice cloth top, that's nice. Um, let's open this top. I don't really want to stink up my garage, so I'm only going to leave it open for a little bit. We're going to end up gutting this interior because I need to make sure all of the mud and dirt is out, and I also need to make sure that all the connectors are clean and dry before we send power through any circuitry here. Open sesame. Open, please. Simon says open. Do your thing, latch. There we go. Oh, now the other side. Oh, there's a bunch of junk there. We're just going to... Okay. Um, wow, that smells bad. Uh, water did not get into the center console. I think water got to about here. Actually, the water level is right here. So, yeah, water level, water line is right here. So, yeah, it got pretty deep, but under the pedals, and there, again, there's not really a lot here that could get ruined. Now, this car has something else really good that no one would have known. Third, fourth, fifth. This is a six speed. This car also has an NA6 or non airbag 90 to 93 Miata dash in it. So it's a little bit lighter, looks a lot cleaner, and it has a roll bar in it. I don't know if that's a weld in or bolt in. We'll get to that in a minute. This car's got some more stuff done to it than he even told me about. This car has very few bolts that have not been turned. And the differential is no different. This car has a Mazda Speed Miata Torsen and larger axles, and it's been re-geared to 363. And all of that work was done, yep, 2,000 miles ago. Lots of goodies. The very first thing I'm going to do is remove the Mega Squirt. This car has a Mega Squirt plug and play. Oh, come on. Nope, that doesn't move anymore. And it does look like it unfortunately got wet. So we're gonna take this to work, run it through the sonic cleaner, clean it. As long as it wasn't powered up when wet, it should be just fine. If I can get the connectors out. Well, let's start on the easy side. Oh, there's one connector, there's two. No corrosion. The seats are trash in this car. Most of the interior that got wet is gonna end up getting thrown away unless it's hard plastic. So I'm just gonna strip the interior, I guess. That's just. That's just the next step. Huh, I guess this is a headrest speaker seat. So we might have to use some parts out of these. I thought this was an A-package car, so that means it wouldn't have headrest speakers, but I guess I was wrong. And that's going to go away. The other benefit of getting these seats out of here and the carpet out of here now is that it'll stop stinking up my garage. It just doesn't smell good. I've smelled plenty of flood cars in my life. They're never good. Oh. It's, it's stuck. Wait a minute. Okay, yeah, this one still has. Does this one not have head? Nope, it's got headrest speakers. I just couldn't see the plug. Put that in the keep pile. What is going on here? There we go. I thought there was a little Mickey Mouse action going on. But it wasn't. Off the keep pile. Let's get the floor mats out of the way. 
That might be able to be saved. Get this piece of carpet out. That's gross. All right, do we have any clips to remove here? Nope, nope, nope. Got some kick panels. A dead pedal. Now, fair warning, I'm gonna cut this carpet because I'm replacing it with brand new carpet. And there's no real reason to be gentle, none at all. So I can have nice carpet to throw away? No. Looks like I gotta take the uh, dead pedal out first. Oh, this stuff will come out nice and easy. That's great. That makes me very happy. Let's get the rest of these loose fasteners. Let's see if the carpet cut in this. Probably not, but it will be when we're done. Time to slice and dice. Kind of sucks having to do this, but gonna get new carpet so that is super duper duper uber absolutely the grossest thing and it's sopping wet all right now we're gonna get into this side here I guess I don't really need a knife I can just okay I need a knife it's strong up there I'm really glad this isn't really that adhesive, that much, there's not that much adhesive on here. I'll be able to take all this stuff out really easily. Got some harnesses to clean. It's gonna be fine. Nothing I haven't done before. Oh, this is so, so ick. It's fine. I'm just gonna, yeah. It'll fit in my trash can easier this way too. Oh, it's got sitting water in here. Neat. Just get this stuff out of the way. We'll get the rest of the stuff out of the way. That was dangerous. Go through the hole. Uh-oh. Well, let's just keep pulling, I think. That's the answer here. I'm gonna go on the other side and check. Maybe there's a, I think there's a clip at the top of the trans tunnel and that's what popped. Now, let's pull the rest of this stuff. I gotta get down to just the chassis. Around it there. We'll just kind of hang that on the light. Oh, hey, car's already getting cheaper. Oh, what is that? Two pennies. Oh, it's really nice to see one of these without rust. Most of the time, when I pull the carpet out, I find rust along here. What tow board? This car doesn't have any of it. I am so glad that that wasn't like glued down to the floor. Because I'm not certain of the way the back of the door panel looks after the flood, I don't know if it's gonna be usable or not. I'm gonna pull the driver's side door panel. We'll take a look at the vapor barrier. And if it looks like there's mud inside the door, we'll pull the other side as well so we can clean the inside of the doors out. Now there is a tool for getting these out. And where I put it, I can't remember, so. We're just gonna do it the way, the way you do it when you don't have the tool, which isn't bad anyway. Oh, 
Well, it definitely looks like this got wet. You can see there's kind of a water line. Water, God, why do I say it that way? Uh, there is also some mold growing in this area. So if I decide to reuse this door panel, I'm going to have to spend some time and treat that. If not, I'll see if I've got some better panels at work. Well, it might be a little hard to see, but there's a faint water line on the speaker. And I don't know if that'll render the speaker useless or not. Um, I'm not really an audio guy, but I have other speakers if I need to replace them. But that definitely means with the water up to this level here, that there's definitely going to be some mud in this door. So I'm going to peel the bottom layer of this plastic back. I'm going to take the speaker out so that I can clean behind it. I don't want any mud or buildup in the doors that can cause rust at a future date. Well, there is mud in there. You can kind of see a faint water line right above that paint line, but yeah, you can see I, I wiped that mud away. We're going to have to get these doors cleaned out. Well, I've got this thing pretty well prepped. Uh, I've got most of the wires tucked away that shouldn't get wet. There's going to be some connectors that do get wet. They already were wet, and I just want to actually clean them. We'll do something else so they don't corrode. Uh, I've also thrown the floor mats and this rear carpet piece back in the car so I can power wash them so they look nice. And I've got the doors both stripped so I can clean those. The rockers will clean those. We're going to get as much of the mud and dirt off this car as we can. All right, now I'm going to take a minute and pop these rubber plugs out of the floor if I can. That way the water can come out of here and not sit. Oops, let's kind of get a screwdriver. Let's get a clean in, shall we? That's getting a lot of stuff wet. Let's do something different. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's definitely blowing some dirt out of the rocker. All right, now we're going to try to clean the inside of this door out. You see the color of the water, all the dirt in the water that's coming out of this thing. I'm trying to do this without pulling the plastic out. It's kind of messy. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Probably going to have to pull that plastic out. All right, I peeled back a corner of this here so I can get in this side. That should be good enough. It also helps that I have my power washer on. All right, it should be good for the door. Part of the floor cleaned out. Oh no, plastic. Don't do me dirty. No, it doesn't let all the water out, but we'll get the rest of that water out. Water, why do I say it that way? I never grew up like that. Let's get this part of it clean too. Now I'm going to power wash the engine, the pulleys, but I'm only going to do from about a couple inches above the water line and down. There's still some exposed parts that I shouldn't get wet, and I don't really want to detail the engine compartment yet. There's still some more work I want to do under here, but I want to get all the mud, or at least most of the mud, out of here as I can. Ignoring the condition of my driveway, I'm going to clean out the base of the fender. This isn't just from flood, this is just from driving the car. These cars rust real bad in this area and it's very important you clean this out. I actually have another Miata video on this from way back when, so let's see what kind of junk comes out of here. Oh, 
Well, that really wasn't that bad, but it still, still threw a whole bunch of junk down on the ground. And actually, you can see there's some leaves. Yeah, that's the stuff that creates rust right there. Oh, there's some stuff in there. Let's keep power washing. It's not clean yet. That's pretty clean. Now we'll work on the door. I'm gonna have to peel this back. I don't wanna do this. Butyl tape is gross, but I'm gonna do it because it's gotta be clean. You can see the color of that water coming out of that door, it's all mud. And this may not have ever made a difference, but I can't let it be like that. No way. It's not built that way. All right, I think I'm going to put the top up now. So then I can wash the entire car. I think that's what I need to do. Before it goes inside the garage, I want it clean and shiny. We're just gonna give it a quick suds down, you know? Just a little wipe down, nothing too crazy. I just don't wanna work on a dirty car in my garage, that's all. Work on dirty engines all the time. I don't think that's unreasonable. And I'm gonna miss all the spots, it's okay. I guess I did this wrong. I went back to front. Now that I've got it upstairs in the garage, I can towel it out a little bit, try to get all of the water, the standing water. That's all we're trying to do. We're basically just trying to dry it off as much as we can. All right, it looks like I got most of the sitting water out of here. Now we need to blow out all the connectors. That's next, and we don't just have these these little guys i got some up there on the chassis harness that feeds the back of the car i know those got wet so we're going to get those cleaned out too so these are the other two connectors i am concerned about they for sure have power going through them and they absolutely got wet and they're still wet from washing so we're going to get these dried out here Let's towel this area out first real quick. We're not just doing this. There's more to this process. Nice thing is there's no corrosion, which tells me that it wasn't wet for very long or that uh, it wasn't wet with power. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, scrub these floorboards. I want to get any signs of flood out of this car. Um, there's still going to be some areas that I can't reach, but I want to get as much of the dirt and mud. I know I power washed it, but it'll still be better if I scrub it. And then, uh, at that point, we're going to let it sit and try to get some of the moisture out of it. And then we can reinstall some stuff. 
if I have stuff. I'm about finished with cleaning these floorboards. Uh, the nice thing is this car has absolutely no rust and you would definitely see some rust if this was a rusty Miata. Uh, I've got the plugs to put back in. I might, might buy new ones just because when they have been in for so long they get so hard and dry that they don't always seal very well and I think new ones are inexpensive. But the boards came pretty clean. Um, I'm going to still say that there's some moisture in here underneath these rails, the seat rails, and in some other areas probably towards the front. So what I'm going to do is put a dehumidifier in here and close this car up and let it sit overnight. And hopefully that'll draw any remaining moisture out of this car. Keep in mind this thing sat closed up with a bunch of moisture in it for some time. That's why there's mold on the seats and the carpet. And I want to avoid any chance of that coming back for any reason. So all of this stops, it may be totally excessive. I'm still gonna do it. Okay, I've got this thing all closed up. Top is up and Got my little bitty dehumidifier running. I have no idea if that's gonna actually collect any moisture out of here, but I can tell it's still a little wet in here. So we're gonna let that run overnight and I'll check it in the morning. All right, let's check this thing and see how much water it collected overnight. Yeah, that was worth it feels dry in here. It smells dry in here, more importantly. Now we're going to kind of loosely reassemble this. We're just going to uh, plug the Mega Squirt back in, and I just want to see if this thing runs. You know, it was obviously taken apart for some reason. It, maybe it was uh, not anything that had happened. I guess what I'm saying is it could have been elective. Now we took this Mega Squirt apart at work, and I ran it through the uh, Sonic Cleaner and one of my guys scraped it and got all the uh, corrosion off it. It had a lot of corrosion, so that's why I'm a little nervous about this whole situation. We're gonna put our vacuum line on. I don't really like this in this location. We may have to fix that. The battery's been disconnected since we picked this car up. So now we're gonna just reconnect this. This goes there. I have no idea if it's got voltage or not. You know what, let's just, let's just find out. Let's see if this lights up. Hey, it has 11.6 volts. Hey, that's that's something. I don't know if it's enough, but it's something. Well, it looks like dash lights are on, radio's on, wideband is on. I think we're in good shape here. All right, so sorry about the chainsaws in the background. One of my neighbors is taking a tree out. Let's see if this uh, cranks and starts. I have my you know, apprehensions about this, but I'm going to go with no. Dash lights seem pretty dim. Oh. Needs more juice. Let's get a charger on this thing. Well, this is just fantastic. It's pretty quiet considering it's been in a slumber for a, a long time. I think it's been sitting for five or six months. And that's, that's a while for pretty much anything with hydraulic lifters. I think most of what we're hearing now is uh, injectors. It also makes me very relieved that the Mega Squirt is okay. That was underwater and that would have been $700 that I had to spend or $800 I had to spend uh, just to get this to run again. Um, props to my guys for helping me clean that out. Let's give it some R's, shall we? 
Yay! Oh, this is great. This won't be too much of a project. That's what, that's what I say every time, right? Oh, hey, look! There's water! Flood water! At least it's fresh water and not, not salt water. This would be a totally different type of video if this was salt water. Yeah, it's still gonna have some water in there. It's gonna be steaming for a while. So I'm kind of just letting it run. I'd like to get it to operating temperature. Yeah, a little loud on the valve train side, but it's not terrible. I just wanna hear those fans kick on. Right now the radiator's still ice cold, but I can feel the uh, oil supply line for the turbo's hot. I think we're in just just perfect shape here. Well, it's looking pretty good. The uh, wide band's working too, so that was another concern I had. A little rich for idle, but you know, it's still in warm up. Kind of still in warm up. I did find one problem that I'm gonna have to address, and that is when you turn the blower on, it almost stalls the car. I guarantee that blower motor got a little wet, and that motor's bad. Nothing comes out of the vents. And, uh, yep. We'll have to, uh, where am I going to get a blower motor for a Miata? Man, these questions. Everything seems to be looking pretty good. Another thing I have to figure out is where I'm going with the Mega Squirt. Previously, it was just kind of dangling in this area behind the passenger seat, and that is where the original ECU goes on any of the 1.8 liter 94 to 97 Miatas. But I don't really like the computer here for various reasons. Number one is the, the vacuum line and all the cords have to go the cables, not cords. Who says cords? That has to go a lot further to get to the Mega Squirt. That's one. And number two is there's no easy way to mount this without modifying the body because the computer bracket mounts directly to the uh, this wall here. So what I'm going to try is using the location from the 1.6 liter Miata, which is right here at the foot well. Now I have a set of brackets out of a 1.6 liter Miata because, you know, that's what I do, and we're going to see, I'm pretty sure that this will just fit in here. I don't know which way it goes. I think it goes this way. Yeah, that makes more sense. There's that. And we're going to see if there's enough space. Let's see. It goes like so. All right, so this harness is going to be in the way, but we're going to... Uh, kind of coil this up. We'll strip all of this plastic off of here if we decide to do this. But first I need to see if there's enough room for it. Because if I do all that work and there's not enough room for it, why have I done it? Alright, let's see what we got. Oh, okay. I see all of the uh, mounting locations are the same since the chassis are identical. So there's one. Oh yeah, there's tons of room back here. So then I will drill holes in this or make some sort of brackets for this, mount the Mega Squirt to the back side of this, and then what I'll have to do, since I have to buy carpet anyway, is I'll buy carpet for a 90 to 93. That way I don't have uh, a, the incorrect shape carpet here and everything would fit perfectly. And it also happens to be lucky on my side that the carpet for the 90 to 93 is still available and 94 up is uh, out of stock currently. See, it's not really that big of a project. Not everything I buy needs way more work than I intended. W wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's, it's not that big of a project. It's a Miata. There's nothing that difficult about these cars and I have almost everything at my warehouse or at my shop. So it does need interior. Carpet's about 600, 650 bucks. I'll buy some used seats or use some seats that are rough out of one of my parts cars and reupholster those. That'll cost me $300, $400 maybe, depending on what covers I get. And then I've got to find door panels. I don't really like the aftermarket panels that are available for these cars. I don't think it would match everything else, but we'll see what I can come up with. These cars are really simple cars. When I saw that it was flooded, I didn't really have too many apprehensions about buying it. It's worst case, for what I paid for it, I could easily make my money parting it out, but I don't like doing that. It's a rust-free car, so what if it got wet? It's just water. It's not salt water. That is a different animal. This would be about what we can salvage from it instead of 
putting it back together. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm not sure when the next update will be, but it'll be when I get parts in. And as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next update.